Hi guys, Bike here at netbooklive.com and uh, we're going to have a look today at the ASUS EPC Flare uh, 1225B which is actually the new series of uh, ASUS mini laptops. This is not really a netbook because it's not a 10 inch and it doesn't come with AMD Atom hardware. This is slightly bigger, it comes with an 11.6 inch screen and it's overall pretty much the same as the previous 1215B generation uh, which uh, it actually succeeds. Uh, okay, we have the device right here. Uh, this is a test unit. It's not identical to the one that will be available in stores, but uh, overall it's pretty much the same. There might be some hardware differences, but the exterior it will be identical to this one. Okay, so let's go ahead and have a quick look at the device. We're having it right here. Uh, as you can see, this is the silver version. It will be available in a bunch of uh, different other colors as well. The casing, it's made, it feels very nice, uh, there is a bit of flex here on the hood, but uh, overall I believe it feels quite uh, quite okay. Uh, you'll notice that this one comes with this new shape, it's no longer a seashell, bod uh, seashell body, it's called now the flare, and you can see that uh, while the previous body was thicker here on the back and it got slimmer, very slim towards the, the front, this one is pretty much the same in terms of height on the front and on the back and it gets a bit uh, thicker here in the middle. But overall, I would say this one actually looks, uh, looks very nice. Uh, on the bottom you have this plastic texture finish which is also available in silver and I believe that the version uh, that will come with other lid colors will have a similar color bottom as well. So this is textured. It will. It feels quite uh, quite solid. It's the same as on the previous generation, and you can see that the battery comes here like a hump. It's a pretty big battery, and you can easily grab the device using this battery. You can grab it like this and transport it uh, if you want. So overall, a very good build quality. Now uh, on here you have a couple of cooling bands and this is a dedicated bay for the memory. Now let's go ahead and see uh, what's up with this battery. Right now it's put in place. We're going to take it out. It goes out like this. You'll notice that it's that there is this uh, edge here, this metallic edge on the bottom. And notice you'll see that it's quite easy to get out and uh, uh, then back in the battery. Uh, behind here you don't actually have anything, no SIM card, no uh, no port at all. And the battery, it's okay. Let's see, it's uh, 52. All right, let me get this on camera. It's a 52 milliamp, 56 watt hour battery. So it's a six cell. A regular battery similar to what we saw in the past. Now getting the battery in is very simple just put it in here press it and then just lock it in place and that's all. Okay. Now let's have a quick look at the ports and see what you get here. First of all you can you'll notice that there is this chromed edge which actually looks quite nice but it might scratch in times it's plastic it feels fairly solid. Uh, over here you have the DC in, two USB ports, USB 3.0 ports, a LAN adapter with this small batch here so it will match the design, a cooling vent over here and an HDMI output, nothing on the front part, on this other side you have the, have the headphone, a microphone, a USB 2.0, a Kensington lock, a card reader and a VGA output. And it's quite nice that uh, they've placed most of the ports over here on the left uh, because uh, if you're using this computer as a righty you're probably going to have the mouse over here. So having too, much, too many cables in this part would have uh, been in your way when using the computer but this design is actually quite okay. The VGA output is here on towards the back which is okay and you're probably not going to use this USB that much since you have the other USBs uh, over here. Just going to use this for, like I said, like maybe a mouse connector or anything like this, and that won't uh, that won't take a lot of space. So it's a good thing. Okay, now let's go ahead and open the device, and you're going to notice a couple of changes here. Uh, first of all, 
there is this a glossy screen but it's an 11.6 inch screen so slightly different the bezel is made is, uh, is uh, made from plastic but it's a made plastic and it feels quite uh, quite rugged quite solid you also feel uh, that the bezel is a bit thick so uh, overall the device doesn't feel very light or very small it, it doesn't feel smaller or lighter than the previous generation which uh, which came with a 12.1 inch display. This one is slightly smaller, 11.6 inch screen, but overall the device is pretty much the same uh, same size. Over here, this entire part, the palm rest and the area beneath the keyboard and on top of the keyboard is made from metal, feels very solid, it won't show fingerprints, won't show scratches, which is actually a very good thing. Now, let me zoom in a bit on this area. You notice that the entire palm rest area is not very big. I'd say it's decently sized, but they could have made it wider. And that's uh, basically because you have all this extra space here on top of the keyboard. And because of this design, uh, trackpad is a bit uh, small as well. And the entire palm rest uh, is small also. Now, talking about the trackpad, it's um, it comes with this plastic finish, I would say it's plastic, I can't say this for sure, it's slightly lowered inside the, the frame of the palm rest and it feels quite nice, it's quite precise, it's quite alright. Uh, the only problem is with the click buttons, they are integrated here and they are quite stiff. So, click buttons, in order to press them you have to press pretty hard here. So, this is basically a problem with right click because for left click you can double tap and it's going to work very okay like this. Now the keyboard, uh, I would say it's very, uh, it's a decent keyboard let's say. Uh, the good things, it's uh, it's not noisy, the keys are properly spaced, properly sized, uh, there is little to no flex in here. Uh, what I don't like about it is the fact that uh, you have this, uh, this weird layout with a row of keys here in the right, which is something I... Uh, I haven't got uh, gotten used to. Perhaps in time you will, and it's going to be all right. But right now, uh, sometimes I'm trying to press enter, I will accidentally uh, hit one of the keys here. Uh, one more thing I don't like on this one is the European layout, the UK layout, and it comes with a very small shift in this part. But uh, the US version will come with a bigger shift here and a line enter, not a, a tall enter like uh, like on this one. Okay, besides this, you have the status LEDs over here beneath the trackpad. You have a couple of buttons. There is the power button over here. And in this other part, there is a quick launch express and the wireless button. So those are all the physical buttons available. Um, should also have a quick look at the screen's hinges. You can see that they're not that massive. They're actually quite, uh, quite small, I would say. But uh, overall the device feels solid, right now the screen is not, is not moving, so I believe that will be uh, quite okay in time, so decent quality overall, and the screen bends back like this, and this much, which is not actually enough for, for everyday use because of the poor viewing angles, but uh, for most uh, uh, desktop environments and for everyday use, it should be alright overall. And I also should show you this. On top of the screen you have a webcam with a microphone, stereo microphone. There is an indicator that uh, tells you when, uh, when the camera is on and you have a privacy protector as well. So overall this is quite alright. Okay, so in terms of build quality and body, uh, the ASUS 1235B is an improvement from the previous generation. Overall better build, uh, overall better materials. But now let's go ahead and open it and see what uh, what you can tell you about the hardware and the performances. Alright, so we're back. This one is loading. It takes about a minute for it to load. The hardware inside is an AMD E450 APU with 4GB of RAM and a 750GB hard drive. Plus uh, it comes with DirectX 11 uh, supported AMD Radeon 6320 graphics. So overall, it's a very good uh, uh, platform for, for everyday use. It's not very powerful, but it's definitely uh, faster than what you get on smaller netbooks and probably, and for sure, less powerful than what you get on uh, 
on ultra books or on a premium size uh, on premium premium portable laptops right now especially in terms of graphics so overall it's a very good balance offer uh, right now we're having a quick look at the screen and i'm going to point show you the viewing angles if i'm leaning the screen back you're going to notice that especially the bright uh, the the black uh, the blacks uh, get to washed up very fast uh, overall i'd say the screen is okay but you really have to to get that uh, hot point uh, so you'll be able to have a, a solid viewing angle uh, now the screen is bright I would say it's it's very bright uh, but the contrast the contrast is not uh, not amazing still uh, I can't say this is uh, poorer than what Asus had on the previous uh, Asus uh, on the previous uh, 12 inch EPCs uh, pretty much the the build quality of the screen and the viewing angles uh, are are on par with what uh, what we're used to and probably it would have been nice if they could uh, they could improve on this because the screen is a very important element for a laptop now uh, let's go ahead and have a quick look at uh, some of the performances like I said uh, the screen is an 11.6 inch with 1366 by 768 uh, HD resolution so everything looks crisp in here but uh, I'm going ahead and show you that this one can handle a bunch of different types of, of content um, of course for the hardware uh, tests and for the benchmarks you should go on the site on netbooklab.com and I'm going to publish over there the written uh, the written review but uh, until then we're going to have a quick look at some movies and for that I believe I have uh, installed Windows Media Player Classic at least I should have let's go ahead and try and play this uh, we have a couple of files here and Windows Media Player Classic is actually here it's the home cinema this is what I use and we're going to try start, uh, start straightly with the 1080p 40 megabits per second MKV and let's see if this one can play this kind of content well it seems like there are some problems I actually haven't tried it before but uh, yeah the problem is that uh, it's not using DXVA this is an older problem I've had with a bunch of different computers activating DXVA can be a problem uh, usually on uh, AMD devices they used to be alright but it uh, seems like this one has the problem as well let's turn on the sound so the clip is playing but uh, overall the sound quality is, uh, is not uh, matching the video quality because this one is not using DXVA so let's go ahead and open the 1080p MOV file Okay, not with this one, once again with Media Player Classic. And we have the 1080p MOV file. And this one will run. So you can see that seeking is very, very fast. And in this situa situation, you see that this one is using the XVA, and this is why it's actually working. Now the sound, let's pause this, the sound is alright, you have decent sound quality, it's not uh, very loud though, uh, so I'd say for a medium or small room it will be okay, if you want to use it in a noisy exterior, it might be a bit problematic. Okay, and let me also show you some other types of content, I have the regular 1080p MKV, and let's see if this one is going to play. Uh, my money are on no because once again there is no DXVA but who knows okay so there is no DXVA but actually the hardware is uh, almost strong enough to be able to play it without DXVA but you can see that sometimes the, the sound uh, is not on par with, with the video but once you, you get to solve the DXVA problem this one will be able to play all kinds of content without a problem Okay, now let's go ahead and open a browser. I'm going to have a quick look at some YouTube video. 
Okay, we're on YouTube. And there is that big bunny animation that I've been trying. Okay, so you can see that it works quite alright. Seeking is quite good as well. Once again, the viewing angles. Especially the vertical ones. The side viewing angles, the horizontal viewing angles are alright. But vertical viewing angles, not that much. And once again, you can see that the speakers are not, are not that loud. Alright, so that was the 1080p YouTube clip. Of course, it will be able to play Netflix, will be able to play Hulu and all these other stre uh, video streaming uh, services. Uh, now let's go ahead and open our blog, which is our blog is of course netbooklive.com. And I'm going to show you some multi gestures on this trackpad. Should wait for it to load. Okay, so this is the site where you find information about mini laptops and netbooks. And right now I'm two fingers scrolling and you can see that I'm not having any problem here. It actually works flawlessly. The trackpad is definitely an improvement. It is a bit small, like I said, but it's definitely an improvement from the previous generation. Okay, so you also have two finger scrolling, which is okay. It's a bit small, but that's not a trackpad problem it's more of a browser and harder problem so I think I managed to to put a browser on its knee here here especially with this bigger page it's not responding to any my any of my commands right now but it should be okay though with uh, most of the most of the web pages. Probably this one put the computer on its knee because, like I said, it's not yet that powerful, especially in terms of uh, okay. So it managed to load in the end. Perhaps I should have been a bit more a bit a bit more careful and have more patience. But this is not one of my qualities, patience. Alright, so that was the browser. Overall, I'd say it's a very good experience as long as you don't get to do the two finger uh, zooming because you see what, uh, what happened here. You should also have uh, horizontal scrolling if it's needed and there should be back and forward gestures and all this stuff. Okay, now I'm also going to show you a game and for that I'm going to connect the mouse. And the game we're trying here is Modern Warfare and you can see that I'm actually not playing the game on uh, with the, the DC in uh, connector uh, put in. I'm playing it on battery and it's still going to be quite okay. Now speaking of the DC in adapter, let me zoom out a bit and show you that the adapter is actually very small. So this is the new charging adapter and you can see that it's half the size of the the height of the screen and it's actually smaller than my laptop than my uh, mouse I have a mouse over here and the connector is definitely smaller the the power brick and you also have a very small DC in cable very small tip here so this is quite okay because when have when having to carry uh, to carry this around it will add to the overall experience okay so right now this mouse should work think all right seems not to be working but it will work soon okay here we are so the mouse is working and I'm going to try modern warfare 
I've already installed it and I have uh, an image of the device so I can play the game. And it's gonna load pretty fast. Like I said, the processor is not very fast here, but uh, the graphics, the graphics are overall, overall quite, uh, quite okay. And I'm going to play the special ops missions and going to options, going to have the resolutions like this. Advanced video, no anti-aliasing. Okay, I'm going to leave all this on, on yes. And texture quality, let's have this on, uh, on normal. Apply settings. And let's see if we can play this. And I'm going to try the one of those missions in here, probably this one, suspension or regular. I don't have fraps installed on the device right now, but uh, overall it should be quite okay to show you if the game is playable just by having a quick look here. Takes a bit of time to load, like I said, processor is not the fastest, or the fastest out there. But for everyday operation, for even some games, for all kinds of multimedia content, it will be uh, it will be all right. Okay, so it loaded. Let's see how's the the overall experience here. Remember, we're playing on battery, so it will be it will get quite uh, probably better if uh, we would play on uh, if we would play on with the power plug connected. Uh, we're still on high performance mode, so... Okay, so I'd say the game is playable, I probably get about 20 something frames per second. Of course, if I would lower the... If I would lower the resolution and the details, I would get more. And it would be even better, but it's, it's nice to have this... Uh, this game playable on this small device. Uh, most other computers in this class won't be able to to play uh, to play this title. But you can see that the sound volume is not not that high here. Definitely, I'm not very good at the game. Let me see if I can make this car burn here okay so that was the game that was modern warfare it's playable it's not flawlessly playable but uh, i'd say that overall it's uh, it's quite uh, quite all right okay let's get out of here okay for more details about performances you should go on the side like i said there will be hardware specs now in terms of battery and temperatures Right now, let's fire hardware monitor, and you can see that this is what uh, what it's showing right now. Temperature at 63 degrees uh, for the for the processor, which is actually quite all right, and the graphic at 60 degrees. Uh, the back doesn't get hot at all, even in the most intensive tests. Uh, the only thing that gets hot is the cooling vent over here on the left, but that's uh, that's still quite uh, quite good and the device doesn't get very noisy there is some uh, fan noise but uh, it's not that obvious and of course uh, the more noise comes from the cranking of the hard drive but if you upgrade this to an ssd you'll have no problems with uh, with that now battery life uh, it's uh, like i said it's a 6 cell 52 watt hour battery in there and battery life it's uh, on average around uh, around four hours for for daily use uh, for gaming, you're going to get about two and a half hours, um, and uh, you can extend battery up the battery up to up to five hours, five hours and a bit, for very light using, like uh, writing some text with wireless off, with the screen brightness turn uh, turn down. Right now, we're running in like the most uh, uh, hungry for for energy uh, mode. And uh, we have an estimated battery life of about two and a half hours. And in our test, that's uh, that's what you should expect for for playing games like the one uh, 
uh, you saw before on battery you will get about two and a half hours for playing uh, movies you'll get probably like uh, three and a half which is still alright for playing HD content so overall very uh, I would say decent uh, decent battery life okay so those are pretty much all the things I wanted to tell you about the 1225B uh, Asus will also have the 12, uh, 1225C available right uh, in a couple of in a couple of weeks that one would come with an AMD hardware this uh, with an uh, Intel Atom hardware sorry this is the AMD version of course the price is uh, right now this one is scheduled to to start at 399 but I'm pretty sure the 399 version will won't come with this processor will come with the AMD 660 which is a much slower processor and it's meant for for netbooks for 10 inch devices this version I believe it will go for around 4 49 to 479 and at least in my country in Romania it will st it will uh, come by default with 4 gigabyte of RAM and with a 320 uh, gigabyte hard drive plus the uh, AMD 450 um, processor so the pricing for Europe about 449 euros 450 euros and I think for the States it will be about 479 for this uh, for this version while the cheaper version will start at 399 for the 1225B. Okay, so overall those were all the things I wanted to tell you about uh, this device. It's a fairly good uh, good laptop. It uh, will be all right if you don't have to if you don't have the budget to buy anything uh, more more powerful. And of course, uh, if it will be alright if you don't need uh, a device that it's it's really really fast. The hardware is alright. It's okay for your daily application, for browsing, watching some movies, uh, listening to some music, all this uh, stuff you do on a, on a daily basis. You can even play some games. But if you want, uh, I don't know, to process videos or photos and all this kind of. Uh, CPU intensive application this won't uh, won't uh, be the device uh, you should choose in that case otherwise it's a fairly good uh, good laptop what I like about it is the new trackpad this is clearly an improvement from the previous generation they had very big issues with the trackpad I like the new body it feels very solid and the new materials what I don't like about it are the, is the screen it's still glossy and still has uh, poor viewing angles which is kind of a, a problem if you're trying to using it uh, if you're trying to use it outside or in some weirder situation. For instance, if you're on on a sofa or traveling by plane, it will be a bit more difficult to adjust the screen to get a, a good viewing angle. And also, what I don't really like is uh, is the keyboard with this extra row of keys here on the right. But that doesn't mean that the keyboard is uh, is bad. It's overall or, or okay. But the layout they could have uh, they could have worked on the layout and change it so uh, they won't have this uh, this extra row of keys on the right uh, of on the right side of enter and backspace. Okay. More details, like I said, on the site netbooklive.com, where you have the written review in a couple of days. If you have uh, any questions or just need to know anything about this one, just post a comment below. And of course, if you like our work, don't forget to subscribe and press thumbs up on this clip. Thank you. That was Mike here at netbooklive.com with uh, the Asus EPC Flare 1225B. Thanks.